CataractCoach.com, iris claw lens to address aphakia. It's a great alternative to AC IOLs and also to scleral fixated PC IOLs. So here's a patient. Our guest surgeon is Dr. Val Apostolov from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And you can see the IOL and capsular bag are really just hanging back into that anterior vitreous. And so this is absolute loss of all zinal support and more than half of the clock hours. So using two choppers just to secure that lens and bring it up to the iris plane and bring it through the pupil. And you can see the capsular bag is not at all attached. And so what little zinal support is still there is very weak. And as you bring the lens up, will automatically be broken. So there's the lens that can be brought out, the incision here, and using a second instrument to help. We sped up the video to two times normal speed, just so we can show you the whole case here. And so you wanna make sure those Zeilers uh, attachments are broken, and then this lens can just be pulled out of the eye along with the capsule bag. So there it is, brought outside the eye, and depending on the lens, you can have a reasonably small pup um, incision size. Scissors were used to cut the vitreous that may have been prolapsing there. And so now it's definitely time for an anterior vitrectomy. So you gotta be careful in these cases. You don't wanna put traction on that anterior vitreous because that can predispose the patient to retinal detachment. So here, a bimanual, it looks like 23 gauge anterior vitrectomy is being performed here. You gotta make sure you clean up all the vitreous that's prolapsing through that pupil. And you can see the incision was created in such a manner that it's pretty much self-sealing. So once that vitrectomy has been done, now we can go ahead and switch hands and do it the other direction just to make sure it's really thorough. You don't wanna have vitreous traction. That increases the risk of cystoid macular edema, increases the risk of retinal break or detachment. So you really want that anterior segment free from any prolapsed vitreous. So that's a very nice cleanup. Now you can put an anterior chamber lens in. You can do a scleral fixated lens, such as a Yamane technique or using Gore-Tex to suture a lens that has eyelets, all those are very appropriate. I would not recommend suturing a lens to the back of the iris in a case like this, and the reason is there's no capsule bag support and those two sutures aren't gonna be enough. So there's the iris claw lens, that's the artisan lens or the Vorst lens, and that's placed into position, oriented horizontally at three and nine, and then you can use the second hand, the left hand there, to enclavate part of the iris into the claw. And so it's important to keep the lens centered right there over the pupil. And you wanna make sure that you uh, capture enough of the iris to have this a very strong fixation. Now the question we sometimes get is what about putting the same lens to the back surface, the posterior surface of the iris? That can be done as well. But according to Dr. Apostle, that may not provide enough support. So a stronger support is to have it this way. Notice also sub-incisionally, there's a small peripheral iridotomy that's been performed. And again, really making sure that there's a good grab of tissue there in the claw of this lens. Now, if you are gonna place the lens on the anterior surface of the iris versus the posterior surface, there's going to be a difference in the lens calculation. The posterior placement will, will require a higher eye well power for the same refractive outcome. But I do trust Dr. Poslov, and we will do it his way with an anterior placement on the anterior iris. That iris stroma is stronger and more robust, and the patient will have a better long-term outcome. Now, this lens is actually not available in the USA. In the USA, we have iris claw lenses for the treatment of high myopia, and meant to be placed in patients who are phakic. And so those come in very high negative power, such as minus 12 or 14 diopters. And so for a routine patient like this, where the eye will power for the capsule bag would be plus 20 diopters, and maybe this anterior chamber iris claw lens would be more like 18 or 18 and a half diopters, we don't have that in the USA. So I definitely have to defer to my international colleagues in Europe and Asia and in other countries to let me know their experiences. So here at the end, the lens is very secure. Bimanual IA is being used to remove any viscoelastic from the eye. And also I like the way the suturing was done. The suturing was done in a very secure manner and to hopefully induce minimal astigmatic effect. This looks like a very nice result. And I can tell you the patient had a beautiful outcome.
So I want to thank Dr. Posloff for a beautiful surgery and for showing us technologies that, gosh, I only wish we had here in the USA. Thanks for watching.